in my ear. That's how it works through the ear here. Michael Schmidt, you've got a story running in tomorrow's Times that the president tried to fire Mueller in December. Break yeah, away. There was a story in December about a subpoena that had gone to Deutsche Bank that said that um, that was the initial report said it was directed at the president and his business dealings. The president did not like this idea. And this is gets at this issue of the red line, the looking into his finances, and seriously considered firing Mueller did at that it? point. It didn't get to that point because they were able to figure out the president's lawyers that the story was wrong. There was some discussion with Mueller's office. They were able to come down to it. But it just shows how when the president thought that Mueller had gone beyond that line, he was willing to do this, or certainly willing to seriously consider it. Now, you have to understand, though, the president has talked a lot in the past year about firing Mueller. And sometimes his aides have ignored him, sometimes they've slowed walked him. In the case of. How's Don he fire him? Who's he fire first? Well, he has to so fire somebody ought to on that. How can he do this? Does he have to get rid of Sessions and put in a recess appointment? Does he have to get someone else in the agency who's passed muster with the Senate? Here's how I think it would work, Chris. The president, as head of the executive branch, has enormous powers. One of his powers, arguably, would be to repeal the special counsel regulations. Once they are repealed, he could either fire Mueller or, fi or order someone to fire Mueller. It's not entirely what clear what the statute? path is. How does he repeal it's, it? It's not a statute. It's a regulation. And as the head of the executive branch, he has authority to repeal or promulgate regulations. That's the argument. Can he do it? I think the answer is yes. Wow. And you know, Chris, Paul, people say that it would be people say that it would be a constitutional crisis if he does that. It wouldn't be a constitutional crisis because the remedy is clearly spelled out. It impeachment. It would be a political crisis, however, because it would be up to the Republicans who control the House to act. And if I'm advising Trump as his lawyer, I might say, call their bluff. Well, let me ask you, Paul, now you're on here. Uh, let's talk this in terms of uh, the smart move for Trump. Let's assume you're his lawyer right now. It, it looks to me like this iceberg coming at his Titanic is going to get him eventually because it just keeps looking and looking and looking for ways in which he may have broken the law. It just is like that. And maybe it's all legitimate within the prosecutorial discretion, to, within the mandate of the special counsel to find any place that later on could turn up as a criminal violation of this president. The odds are, having come out of New York real estate and being Donald Trump, they will find something. If you're Trump, what do you do knowing that? I mean, you have your lawyer. First of all, you get a lawyer. You get a good criminal defense lawyer, and you have him make the case to Mueller that this investigation centers around collusion. And unless Mueller comes up with evidence that Trump himself conspired to steal the election, then anything else is off the table or some kind of clear allegations of obstruction of justice. But frankly, I don't even think we'd see obstruction charges without really clear evidence of collusion against the president. That's the president's best case to make, that he wasn't involved with the Russians directly in trying yeah. to steal the election. Again, if Mueller has evidence of that, then all bets are off for the president. Chuck, I still agree with Paul on that. I think to win this case with the American people, that means the center not the hard right, but the center and the left, which already have much of the left on impeachment. To win the case, you have to show he involved himself with the Russians, because that's the heart of this case. You can't just find, oh, we couldn't put, find anything on collusion, but we find this other stuff. I don't think that'll pass muster. Politically, what's your belief? Right. So I think you're right politically, but moreover, I'm going to defer to you politically, Chris, because I don't know politics the way you do. Legally, that's not the case. Legally, if they find a bank, well, first of all, it's but, it, but I asked the, 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 the political question is because the House of Representatives needs 218 right. to impeach. You need 67 senators or 68 to convict and remove from office. That's a high, we're talking about a high barrier here. That's a very high barrier. And if the only resolution would be impeachment, meaning if we decide you cannot charge a sitting president, and I think, by the way, that's probably true, then politically, you're absolutely right. If you can charge a sitting president, then in my mind, the question is a legal one and not a political one. Heidi, where are we I at think here? the timing of, of this uh, is really interesting. What, he need, what, does, what does Mueller need to win, to put it lightly here? 
put it bluntly, what does he need to win in history that this whole thing was purposeful? Look at his history in prosecuting previous cases like Enron. There were waves of charges, and the first wave of charges in the Enron case were obstruction of justice. I think all along we've all said that that is the low hanging fruit, especially when he's bringing in people like Hope Hicks who are on that plane drafting inaccurate statements. Um, that is the easiest, the, the, the collusion, that could go on for many, many more months and maybe years. Do you think, uh, Michael, we're getting near the end of this segment, are you thinking uh, the fact that Trump was thinking of firing him in December, that's in your reporting for tomorrow morning, do you think that possibly Mueller is somewhat gaming this, and I don't mean it negatively, pushing Trump because he thinks he's a bad customer, pushing him as hard as he can, thinking he might spring loose and fire him and therefore make the case for obstruction big time? No, I don't, don't think, think he's I don't think so. I don't think he needs to. The president seems to inflict himself in different ways without the help of others. If you look at all of these questions, why was Mueller appointed? What is Mueller looking at? Much of it, including the president's own political problems outside of Mueller, come back to things he did himself and were not existential things that came at him. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.